Oh, uh oh. Let me go sit back. I just have to remember that. Kind of adjusting my computer. My name is the one and only Hobo Tom. I'd like to thank Twisted Pixie for the time we spent this afternoon together. So much appreciated. I need to get out of the house. My stupid job only told me I could work three days this week. Stupid. God. But enough about that. You know what? Nowadays, everyone's talking about WrestleMania. But this guy has purchased his ticket for NXT in Sanford, Florida on Thursday. So you know what that means, folks. Just for you, probably on Friday, there's going to be some NXT videos. I have no idea which wrestlers are showing up because it's been a long time. I've been to a Thursday NXT. And I know they do the NXT at full sale on Wednesday. So you never know what you'll get. Um, oh, one, my, one also minor note. I forgot to mention this during Raw, but I want to say it was during the Ronda Rousey Dana Brooke match. I saw one very distinct shirt in the arena. And that was a Beanie Club shirt. A beanie Club? Or have I seen that shirt before? Kevin Scampoli! Again, one of the people that kind of semi-inspired me to start a YouTube channel. Kevin Scampoli! I think he's on KSP? His own little YouTube channel? Very unique individual. Yeah, I do recommend checking him out. I haven't seen his show in a while. I think he changed up too. But enough about that, all that fun stuff. Let's talk about some SmackDown. The SmackDown was really, it was interesting. There was there were only two wrestling matches. And I'll get to both of those because the one it's almost not fair to call it just one wrestling match because it was really how many? One, two, three, four, five. It was really six wrestling matches all rolled up into one. So I'll break it down a little bit. So this show is actually going to be kind of quick. Which is good because it's past midnight and I have to get to sleep and get back to work tomorrow. I don't know why I left. But let's talk about SmackDown a little bit. Well, I know why I left, but... I might be leaving more on a more permanent basis soon. But let's talk about SmackDown. SmackDown was, again, a really fun show. Um, I've heard a lot of reviews about Raw. And I think I was kind to Raw. People were saying, oh, it's just building up to WrestleMania. That's what it's supposed to do. SmackDown was a little bit different. Again, it still had its whole built to WrestleMania. In its own way, first he started with the Miz promo. Again, how Shane McMahon's gone ego crazy. It was good. Then the first match of the night, we had the Iconics. And now the Iconics are wearing matching ring, ring gear. So that means they're actually becoming a much more cohesive tag team. Because before, Billy Kay used to wear that kind of blue velvet bra and like high-waisted. Bottoms and Peyton Royce had like the green and purple, like bikini ish sports bra top and a little bit lower cut again, green and purple bottoms. But now they're both sport, they are both sporting blue and black. I do miss Billy Ray's kind of flowing sheer cape that she used to wear, that gave a pretty cool effect to it. I think that's when she first debuted against Nia Jax. And a couple times in NXT she wore it. Now that she's been on the main roster, I, don't th I, think they, I think they got rid of that. They came out, they cut their normal iconic promo. It was pretty good. Um, Sasha Banks and Bailey were already in the ring. And they, oh, I saw a Hey. Oh, I can't know. Aussie. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oh, oi. 
Boy, Billy, look who's here. A Sasha Banks and Bailey finally showed up. They're going to go have a fisticuffs. I, I can't do Australian females. I can't. So I won't even try anymore. But again, it's our typical promo. And it was a really fun match. I mean, it really kind of highlighted the Iconics as a team because what they did, they had the very classic cheating heel team tactics. Again, you go to that old stuff. I like that old stuff. That old 70s vibe where you... Uh, probably late 70s, early 80s tag team vibe where you knew they were going to cheat to win. Because just like Jesse the Body Ventura says, win if you can, lose if you must, but always cheat. The yeah, Iconics are good at that. Because again, it was pretty good. Um, Sasha Banks and Bailey had control for most most of the match until they started to get to the outside. Um, kind of Sasha Banks did like a modified 619 on to Peyton Royce, because Peyton Royce was doing the arm stretch over the ropes. Um, they pulled Billy Kay off the ring. Again, you always get your come up in. So then Bailey got pulled off the ring. Bangs her head, of course, off the hardest part of the ring, the ring apron. And that leads for a roll-up by Peyton Royce with an assist, however, by Pey by Billy Kay. Billy Kay is still up there with me. Although her boobies are smaller in real life than they are on TV. Wait a second, I can't believe I just said I can't believe I just said that. Bad hobo. Again, I was with a friend, a female friend, in Victoria's Secrets, and, and of course I, I choose the most scantily laced silky neonish pink camo panties for her, and she just stares at me and says, well, didn't say anything. Just went. And of course, just staring at the bras. This kind of amazed me, because I think in the Victoria's Secret, they aren't expensive. Like, 30-some-odd dollars for a bra? Listen, this shirt cost me, I don't even think that much. It's 15 times the material. But I digress. Um, so after that, uh, Ray Mysterio. I guess, I forget if it's Ray Mysterio or Ray Mysterio Jr. I forget what they call him now. But I'll just say Ray Mysterio and his son Dominic Mysterio. I guess. Come out, Dominic's going to be ringside, and a new match is Rey Mysterio versus Samoa Joe at WrestleMania for the U.S. title. So that should be actually pretty good. Again, there's going to be 17 matches at WrestleMania. That's going to be a long show to watch. I thought the New Japan Wrestle Kingdom 13 was long. This is going to be pretty long. At least it's had a normal hour, I guess, because they are in... Oh, yeah, they're in the same time zone as me. So that makes sense. They have the Kevin Owens show. Kevin Owens is really funny. He has his KO show t-shirt <laughs> some red tie on and a black jacket. Very well set up stage. He brings up Becky Lynch and Charlotte. They have a discussion. And before the final question is asked, Kevin Owens does the perfect thing. He's like, wait, 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 wait. Before you answer that question, and then he steps out of the ring, says, okay, Becky, you may now answer that question. And, of course, Becky just punches Charlotte or slaps Charlotte in the face, and that leads to brawl between Charlotte and Becky. Good stuff. Oh, wait, I forgot to mention this, too. The Iconics and Bosses Hug. That was a cheeseburger match. So again, I kind of was going fast forward because they had some good stuff going on. Again, with Rey Mysterio, his son Dominic, versus Samoa Joe. The Kevin Owens show was actually really good. Again, he's smart. Then the AJ Styles promo, 
It was good. No complaints. So, you know who's not winning? The next and final match of the night. Um, Daniel Bryan comes out, cuts a promo. Says, Kofi Kingston, you don't deserve this. You're being gifted this opportunity you've lost so often. And so let's talk about this match. This is actually really fun. It's, it's a, again, the gauntlet match between Kofi Kingston and it starts off with Sheamus from the bar. What I like about this match, and I'll give it all a little critique every so often, is that there was some very classic wrestling elements. Matt wrestling. With that and classic counters, whenever you do old school, especially collegiate style wrestling in a WWE ring, it just feels more like a true competition, at least to me. So that always is good. And this was, I think, the longest match. Um, Kofi Kingston hit, did hit a flying hit by Kofi over the top rope to the outside. Again, good, excellent stuff. Um, he hit the Trouble in Paradise on Sheamus. He got the pin. But then, of course, Cesaro just runs right in, clubs him from behind. Ding, ding, ding. Match starts. Um, again, it was a long first match. Uh, Cesaro jumps again. Cesaro jumps right in. I would give that section. I'll you know I'll kind of grade each, and then I'll give an overall rating. That sounds good. Yeah, that first match definitely surf and turf. Then of course Cesaro just comes in, clubs him from behind. Oh man, Cesaro was strong. See, so caught him. After Kofi tried to jump from the top top rope to do a splash. Again, really good back and forth. It's uh, Cesaro's movesets, again, more designed to wear on Kofi. Uh, put him in the Texas Cloverleaf. And then he actually tried kind of a modified, really stand-up, I guess more like a Walls of Jericho. Or, I guess, Line Tamer. That Jericho used to do. It just kind of wears down Kofi slowly. Again, Kofi Kingston hit the SOS on Cesaro, and Kofi advanced Cesaro's out, and this match was also a really good, fun match. It highlights the fact that Kofi's been there for a while. He's, he's doing the appropriate selling. Cesaro's smart, he just jumps him, and with all the movesets that they did, it made sense, and it's a surf and turf section. Then next you have Kofi Kingston versus Rowan. Rowan's just so strong. He literally just like beats Kofi up a lot. I think Kofi gets in a couple punches and kicks. For the most, most part, Rowan just throws him around, uh, throws him through the barricade. Rowan did the dumb, I guess, well, brute thing. Is that he just started, he whacked Kofi Kingston with a chair. And I said, uh-uh. That's a DQ. That means you lose, buddy. It's not even death to finish because the match continues. You cannot have a death to finish if the match is going to continue. You get DQ'd, you lose. Rowan was not happy about that. So again, this part of the match, eh, it's a ham sandwich. So Rowan's upset about that. Iron Claws. Kofi threw a table, which was pretty good. Then you hear, uh, Joe, Joe, Joe. Joe's mu Samoa Joe's music plays. He has a big smile. Samoa Joe's that overconfident heel, though. Because he kind of toys with to Kofi a little too much. If I was Samoa Joe, I'd put the co He's already beat up. Put the coquina clutch on him. I win. Of course, Samoa Joe's taking on Rey Mysterio, so you know Samoa Joe's not winning. Which I guess is the only kind of negative about this whole match. You kind of knew because of the matches that were already made for WrestleMania, who's who's not winning. So they kind of spoiled themselves a little bit like that. If that makes sense. Um, again, Kofi's just all beat up. Samoa Joe's so deliberate. 
at all. Samoa Joe did a chop to the back. That sounded amazing. And Samoa Joe went for the muscle buster. But Kofi Kingston reversed the muscle buster. We haven't seen the muscle buster in a long time. It's always nice when they pull out some move that they haven't used in a while. It makes it feel fresh and new. Uh, I think, um, who was it? It was Corey Graves called it the dreaded and feared muscle buster. Or something like that. However, Kofi Kingston reversed that. And got a pin on Samoa Joe. Not make Samoa Joe happy. But because it was the muscle buster. This section of the match also gets a surf and turf rating. Again, Samoa Joe's not, not happy though. Uh -uh. You don't roll up Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe locks in the Coquina clutch and begins to make Kofi Kingston go to sleep. And then, of course, when, Co when the referees show up, separate Joe. Joe's, Joe's just upset. Joe has to put that Coquina clutch on first, especially if it's a tired opponent. He has to use his noggin like Kevin Owens does. So. Randy Orton comes out next. Again, Orton is so deliberate and his stomps are so good. He did not get a chance to use the RKO. Again, if he kicks him, I'll give him this. At least had that well scouted. Um, by now, Kofi Kingston's just exhausted. He's lying on the ring half the time. Orton just stomps on him. And Orton's stomps are so deliberate. They look so good. It was just really good. Um, eventually he again he gets hit by he gets hit by the draping DDT. He does roll up. Orton at at the end of the match gets the pinfall win. So again, it's a roll up, not a counter. So I mean, they've had him win really every way now. And again, this part it was good. It played to their strengths. You know what? This is another surf and turf section. But then, no chance. No chance in hell. Vince McMahon's music hits. But Kofi, you're going to get your shot at WrestleMania if you defeat this man. Ta da! 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 Daniel and Bryan comes out. It's like, really? By now? Oh, I forgot to mention this, too. Let's see, what else did I forget to mention? The margins. Here, I have to read my notes better. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. Before I get to the end. You know what? I'll just finish it up. Daniel Bryan wins. It's really just a bunch of striking. He puts in the um, yes lock, whatever he calls it now. He does hit the knee plus to get the victory. I guess it's going to be another couple of weeks for to build up Kofi Kingston's angst. And this section, only because I think I was so vested into the fact that Kofi Kingston, I think, lasted longer than Seth Rollins did. And in theory, if Vince did not show up, Kofi Kingston would have done what Seth could not, and that's win a gauntlet match. I'm going to give this part a cheeseburger. But you know what? Overall, this whole gauntlet match, this whole gauntlet match earned a surf and turf rating. From one hobo Tom. And now to get to some side notes. Again, I always scribble stuff here in the margins sometimes when I take my notes. Yes, I have notes and only I can decipher them, I guess. Sometimes I can't even I can't even do that. Oh, um, let's see here. 
see here. There was a couple funny things. Oh, yeah. Um, what was that sign I saw? Wait a second. I know I saw it there. Oh, yeah, that's right. Shoot, I can't even read the name. Signing distractions. Boston Hug. And I wrote this down, too, and I can't forget the name. I forget the freaking name. Oh, here it is. I knew it was here somewhere. Dakota Shelburne, a shout out to you because someone loves you. I have no idea what that's about. And in the very beginning, the iconic Tid did reference the whole Ivy League school scandal, the bribery. So that was kind of at least topical. And then during the Gauntlet match backstage, the first part that the New Day there munching on pancakes. And then every so often they cut to the backstage and the Usos showed up. And the Usos were also watching and eating pancakes. Next time we go to the backstage, the Hardy show up. Everyone's watching the TV show eating pancakes. And then Mustafa Ali was there. He got enjoying, probably munching on some pancakes. And then there were a whole bunch of people there. But the one person I remember seeing only because she has the most famous butt in all of hobo history. That's Nikki Cross. Nikki Cross was there eating pancakes for Kofi Kingston. So that was SmackDown. Overall, it was a fun show. Um, it just seems to go so much faster than Raw. Again, the very quick programming note. On Thursday, you can see this guy in Sanford, Sanford, Florida, at the Sanford, I think, Towns Convention Center, or whatever it's called. I have to take a look at that again. I have to print up my ticket. Oh, wait, tomorrow's Wednesday. I better do that soon. It's going to be at the Sanford, I think, either Center. I think it is the Civic. And on Friday, I shall post videos. So, again, if you see a guy, an ugly guy wearing a hobo shirt, picking up pieces of aluminum, Hello, Tom. Can I say hello? I, I, I watch your YouTube. Thank you very much for your content. Or say your content sucks. Whatever way, if you say something, you always do get a shout out on my YouTube channel. And everyone have a good night. Bye.